Hello and welcome back and it's a rare sunny day here in the UK and today I want to discuss the Unified Drive 3.0.8 update this is a new update from unify uh, detailing a few of the improvements when it comes to storage resiliency and redundancy along with a few other little bits and bobs in the new update for unas pro systems now uh, there are a few little bits and bobs here but we're going to focus a lot of this video on the new ray configuration because not only are there some things they've integrated here that already exist i would argue on other platforms but they've actually brought in a couple of little things that i've not really seen from any other nas brand and i do think these are worthy of note but let's crack straight on with the storage because that is where things are interesting i've wiped this system in order to demonstrate just how interesting unify have gone about this drive 3 update in how storage arrangements are going to work now i presume a lot of this is to do with potential systems that may or may not come out in the future that are going to have more evolved storage it's glad i'm glad they're nailing down the fundamentals but to put it into perspective when the unas pro first rolled out whether you are an owner right now or not it really only had one storage configuration, a single disk failover. Now, there was a two disk failover that was a semi pseudo, but not really RAID 6, and there was hotspot options. Now, as time has evolved, it's been one of the areas of criticism that the brand has faced about the way they've approached storage on this system. And I'm pleased to say in Drive 3, they have addressed a lot of that. As you can see from the top of the screen there, now we have got different methodologies, but also new storage arrangements. So, Previously, you could have that one big storage port. I could go in there, slam in every single disk if I wanted to, stick them all in one giant storage group. They still don't support mixed RAID configurations, but I could create one giant storage pool with all of the drives. Now, what if I have got different classes of drive, different capacities of drive? What's the option then? Well, in that scenario, I could go into the storage pool in a RAID 5 configuration, and again, true RAID 6 and now RAID 10 is available there. And in the RAID 5 configuration, I could go ahead and add these three drives. And then from there, if I wish, I could create a secondary RAID group within the one large storage pool. What that means is, although my, me and the end users are only going to see one storage area, it's going to have two composite areas that can be made up of not only different capacity drives all raided together, therefore getting all of their benefits, but also different performance drives, where I could have SATA drives, uh, SATA SSD drives, I should say, for that larger performance, and another area of larger capacity but slower hard drives, all within the single storage arrangement, and allowing me to either expand upon or repair the different storage groups rather than trying to meld all the drives together which as you can see here with this 24 tb drive if i put those together that drive will be capped down because of the way traditional raid works now there are hopefully plans in the future by the brand to start looking into flexible storage configurations which really does come down to the file system they choose to root use and it will use a lot of R&D to get something stable long term, but at least now this is a nice middle ground, much uh, quite comparable to something like TrueNAS that allows you to expand, but utilizing different RAID groups within one storage pool. But it's not going to be for everyone. What about if you are a user that wants to have individual storage areas for different priority users, slower legacy hard drives with larger capacity for the day-to-day -day grind and backups, but faster access storage over here for those up-to-the-minute data transactions. Well, for you, you could go ahead, create one storage pool there with three hard drives in a RAID 5, and once that RAID 5 is complete, you can go ahead and create a secondary storage pool. Now, again, storage pools and RAID configurations are generally mixed up quite a lot because most users only, you know, domestic users only use one storage area. But this, at the very least, will allow you to create a completely independent running storage point for this faster storage. Now, I know these aren't SATA SSDs, but if they were, I could create this new storage area and add those drives. And like so, I can go ahead and add our secondary storage target there, our secondary storage pool, with its own RAID configuration. Again, depending on storage media or capacity. But it doesn't stop there. Because now, either one of these storage pools, once they finish synchronization, can be expanded on the fly when I need them. Which is what you would expect. One click expandability, easy. But more so than that is how the brand has approached hot spares in this configuration as you can see here this icon uh, this information here at the top right explains it but ultimately what that allows me to do is turn this drive here into a hot spare and now at the click of a single button there 
I have now been able to turn a drive into a global hot spare. A global hot spare allows that one hot spare to service both of the RAID configuration, both storage pools. So regardless if storage pool one has one, two, or even three individual RAID drive combinations, or I've got multiple storage pools, as long as the hot spare is large enough to replace any one of those drives in the individual pools or RAID groups, that one hot spare drive services the lot. And that alongside the ability, if I wanted to, to create in one transaction, the ability to create multiple pools within that storage group from the beginning, are just two of very interesting ways in which Unify have approached simplified storage on their system. And I could, I'll say there are a few brands out there that could stand to you know, learn a thing or two from the way this has been presented so efficiently. Now, is it perfect? No, but I will say that alongside the RAID 5 and the RAID 6 configurations, there is quasi RAID 0 and RAID 1 support. What do I mean by that? Well, when you go into the create storage pool there, as you can see, you've only got RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, but these are approached with expandability in mind. And because of that, it means that if you do want, for example, that seventh bay to not be a hot spare and you had two drives of three in RAID 5 configurations, evening one joint storage pool or parallel running pools. If you choose the RAID 5 option, you can select one disk if you choose. And then from there, create a pool. It warns you, you won't have any uh, um, failover, you won't have any uh, fault tolerance, but it does allow you to now create standalone drives as their own storage pool, which I know is gonna be hugely appealing. Just keep in mind, you will have no protection. You can add drives once synchronization is completed, which again is great stuff there. And if we want to, to add drives to that storage pool later on, at least it means at least for now, we can roll on with that single drive. The same goes if we want after that uh, process is complete, we can look at creating a secondary storage pool. And this time, if we select RAID 10, we can create a RAID 1, technically. We're not creating a RAID 10, which traditionally needs at least four drives, but at the very least, we can now create ourselves a new RAID pool. So now, throughout the course of this video, I've created three pools here in front of you. I've got one traditional RAID 5. I've got a single drive that I'm running in, and frankly, unsafe, but still nonetheless expandable um, RAID 0-esque environment I can scale up over time and finally I've got two drives in a pseudo RAID 1 environment. Again I do think it would be nice if Unify presented RAID 0 and RAID 1 as options but that may complicate things so I kind of see where they've gone. They've found a middle ground and I like what I see. And before we move on, I know there are going to be users that are going to say, what is the point of some of these configurations on a 7-bay box that doesn't have an expansion? Well, I think we have to realistically analyze that um, Ubiquiti and Unify are going to flesh out this range with larger and indeed probably smaller, smaller systems. And therefore, that's where migration comes in. They're already hard-baked uh, backup of complete system configurations uh, very early doors that you can back up to your ui.com account so i think it's very logical to suggest that expandability and migration between um unify systems is going to be a thing when they're going to have uniform software across the platforms again that's where hardware comes in but still nonetheless this is still really interesting to me now the other three big takeaways of this drive update are as follows uh, number one is one that unfortunately at least at the time of recording this i wasn't able to take advantage of and that is to do with cloud backup so if we go into the drive area i've created a test share option here and if i wanted to i could go ahead and create a, ourselves a backup there's a backup task i could select that test share drive that i've created there and select the cloud service now at the moment we've got google drive we've got one drive and we've got dropbox but it looks like they are going to be integrating other cloud storage targets. Now, again, a number of you bought Unify now to get away from the cloud, but at the very least, the option of including Backblaze to me is more important than all of the others, because if we've discussed numerous times on the channel before, Backblaze is still one of the most affordable large scale storage backup options. We talked about this a lot in a video we released last year when we were talking about cloud egress. And although there is already cloud options there and they're going to be adding others, the reason I give Backblaze such a focus is because they do not have the penalties in the same way that other brands do for cloud egress. What does that mean? 
uploading data, fine. But when you need to download data, depending on the scale, and obviously these are quite large scale uh, storage areas, you can be charged significantly by brands just to download your data as quickly as possible, along with a bunch of other penalties as well. So I'm really, really glad that Backblaze has made it onto the list here, and I'm looking forward to synchronizing my system with Backblaze. By the way, I don't have any affiliate link to Backblaze at all. It's just a personal recommendation, and I would give them a shout. Now, alongside that, you've also got improvements in the drive user interface, which you would expect in a drive 3.0.8 update. Now, what I mean by that, now you've got a great deal more control over filters. And again, whether that is creating dedicated storage areas, because now we're talking about having multiple storage pools, multiple RAID groups, having an improved filter will never be more important than it is now. So nailing down the fundamentals, early doors, fair play ubiquity fair play so i'm glad they've integrated these new filters which again i've only just created these storage targets so we can't really explore it that much but still nonetheless i'm glad they've integrated that now at the ground level during this expansion of storage finally alongside improvements hot fixes uh, latency improvements just general quality of life and responsive improvements uh, they've also integrated better access via the identity endpoint application on the nas and again i wasn't able to set that up for this but they now integrated file access permissions for identity endpoint is again not going to affect everyone it's really going to hit a certain class of user but it's just another indication of just how seriously unify are taking this nas family um expanding hopefully in their uh, portfolio there but still nonetheless that has been the drive 3.0.8 update uh, by the time you're uh, watching this i presume uh, at least a release candidate is out there overall i'm really really happy with it i still don't think the system is perfect but this is as close as it's been for a very long time when you are thinking about a system purely for storage and again they have approached storage layouts and storage lingo in an incredibly user-friendly way that i think even the likes of hex os and even zimmer os could stand to take a lesson to and they're guys that are primarily targeting easy user-friendly chewable storage language and i think this is one of the best examples i've seen out there but let me know what you guys think in the comments if you want to learn more there's links to our unify now six months later video and more and if you are interested in getting hold of a unas pro from unify please 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 use the link in the description to do so but only do so if you found this video helpful and you were actually going to get one for yourself because using that link results in a small commission coming to me and eddie it's just us here and as compares and it allows us to keep doing what we do thank you so much for watching thanks for bearing with the insane amount of sunlight that i have tried my damnedest to hide away but i still look like a nuclear bomb has gone off in my face but apart from that i'll see you next time